So in our race for progress, we cannot forget that sustainable development is not only about technological advancement. What do I mean? It is ultimately about the nurturing, the protecting, and the leveling of the heart of progress, our natural resources, and its custodians. While we progress, the communities are also evolving. They are learning about their rights, and they are learning how to enforce it. They are willing to enforce it. So by now, you should probably know that I'm a human rights lawyer, and my task is to speak about the communities, the local communities, and where they fit in, in the development um, that we are talking about. So in 2021, Shell Exploration and Production in South Africa announced that it will commence with seismic surveys to assess oil and gas prospects off the coastline of approximately 6,000 square kilometers between the St. Port, St. John's Port and the Morgan Bay. A few months thereafter, the communities brought an urgent interdict, requesting the court to stop the activities. They succeeded on the basis that they were not properly consulted. A review application followed in 2022. The judgment is still outstanding, which means the interim order is still effective today, leaving Shell unproductive since 2021. On the flip side, and in Namibia, the conservancies and community forests in the Kavango area brought an urgent interdict against Recon Africa, asking the court to stay the activities under, a, under an environmental clearance certificate that was granted by the environmental commissioner. They did not succeed and their appeal that was lodged before the urgent application was only heard in April. In the meantime, Recon was allowed to continue its activities. They even were granted a second renewal for the ECC. The communities were not given a fair and timeless opportunity to raise their concerns. And when they did, it was too late for practical purposes. However, the public publicity worldwide did not look favorable on Recon. The word on the street is that their activities have been stayed for a further debate. The reasons are not known. <coughs> the crux of these matters really is that there need to be no exclusion of the local communities in matters that concern them directly, especially if the intent of any project is to enhance sustainability or sustainable development which I believe is at the core of our government's prerogative, as well as their desires. When we have regard to the United Nations Declaration of Indigenous Peoples' Rights, Namibia voted in favor thereof. It speaks of Indigenous peoples' rights to own land and natural resources to which they were previously denied. And its emphasis is on obtaining the consent from these people in all matters pertaining to such land and natural resources. Free, prior and informed consent speaks of a continuous process, from the moment the idea of a project is born until it has been completed. Throughout this process, the local community should be a part of it. It is their natural resources. They should be prepared. They should be educated, not only about the good prospects of a project, but also the risks mitigating factors, alternative ways to achieve the same results or better results, the costs implications, what they're about to lose, and how they can be compensated. Consent should be given after a period of time has been granted to the communities in order to discuss as per their own customs and practices and in order to make informed decisions. It is a process. It is not one meeting where 50 people come together, five representing traditional authorities, 20 representing the ministries, and 25 representing the companies that are interested in the project. It speaks of meaningful participation. Why? Because in my opinion, 
If a community feels protected, they will also protect the project. There is no one that can look better after a thing than the owner thereof. Secondly, it is also a direct reflection on the initiator of the project. Transparency, accountability, and legitimacy. It means there are no reasons for hiding the objectives of a project, or the distribution of proceeds, or the failure or the effects of environmental harm. Currently, our communities are in the dark. They do not have the full picture, and yet they are the people that feel the impact of environment, environmental damages the most. <coughs> they are displaced. Their livelihoods are being affected. So why are the communities not fully conversant in the discussions of development projects? Besides not being part and partial of the decision-making bodies, communities are not provided with sufficient information about a project. A once of consultative meeting is not sufficient to discuss the project as well as engage in dialogue. <laughs> Consultations are not being held with community members. Traditional authorities are not community members. In 20, 2019 case, in our Supreme Court, the Kashela case, the court clearly identified that communal land, communal land rights should be dealt with on par as commercial land. The owner of that right should be compensated. They should benefit from that right, not the traditional authority. Luteritz has 80% of its residents are reliant on fishing resources. We all know offshore drilling is going to affect the marine life. These people should be consulted. They should know what they're in for. And then recognition of community organizations. Conservancy, community forests, they should be given the recognition that they deserve. They are part of the community and they have a responsibility towards the members and also the natural resources. Information being given to the communities should be in a language that they are comfortable with, that they understand. It cannot be in English. Our local communities do not speak effectively in English. So how, what, how do we use the mediums to advertise notices and applications in newspapers that hardly ever reaches the rural areas? They don't even have the expert knowledge to understand the content of those notices. This is not fair on them. This is not fair at all. Projects have to invest in educating our local communities about the possible projects that are taking place around them and we need to respect the cultural differences. All these efforts have to provide a platform for the voices of community, so they are heard and ensure they are given a fair and reasonable time to respond and enforce their rights. The only mechanism currently that provides for public participation is the Environmental Management Act, and it is only in the initial stages of an application for an environmental clearance certificate. The only other alternative is an appeal, but I've already indicated that an appeal, as in the Kunkara matter, is flawed because the regulations are not in place. Our legal framework should support the communities in addressing their concerns relating to their rights to land and natural resources. This includes their right to raise concerns of environmental degradation. It currently does not do so how do we tie the knot between the local communities and sustainable development goals? We need to ensure that the communities are part of the project. They are not there for you to inform them of what the project is about. They should be part of the decision making on how that project is supposed to operate. They need to own that idea as much as the implementers. They need to benefit equally and share the liability. They should have recourse where they have been neglected or excluded, without fear or intimidation. Sustainable development should be a win-win. No one should be left behind. Okay.
So in conclusion, my recommendation would be that government should ensure that the legal and policy frameworks facilitate community involvement for the purpose it was intended and not merely for a tick of the box exercise. Monitoring and evaluation is not only a scientific problem. The effects of the environment are felt long before the tests could actually be conducted. But if the community has no platform to raise their concerns, then knowing about it is not going to support or, or have an effect. Again, public participation is not another to do on the list, on the list of requirements set by the, by the Environmental Management Act. It is an ongoing process from the beginning of the project right until the end. And although the law currently requires a bare minimum, there is nothing preventing projects from implementing best practices. Standards that confirm public participation is a process of the full operation of any given project. It includes community. It benefits the community. It places them in a, in a position better than what they were before. This is the only way that I can see that we can ensure inclusive development in this country. Thank you.